We'll kick off straight into the programme uh, fully then. I was asked just to talk a little bit about raising the profile of IBD in, in the UK. And when, when I was thinking about this, I thought, actually, what would Richard want? And he wouldn't want us looking backwards, and he would absolutely want uh, people to be hearing about what we were doing looking forwards uh, for the charity. So I'm just going to share with you for 20 minutes um, some of the work that we're doing, currently doing in Crohn's and Colitis UK, raising the profile of IBD was clearly something Richard was very, very passionate and uh, a real advocate for. So it's an, an, an honour to just talk to you a little bit about some of the work we're doing now to build on the fantastic legacy that Richard's left us. So I was at a dinner party uh, two weeks ago uh, and I was just sort of thinking, and I'm sure you've done this, uh, uh, what do people know about IBD? And there were a number of people at this dinner party that I'd never met before. And as you do, you get talking about what you do. And I was just asking people whether they knew about IBD. And there was a lot of head scratching, as I'm sure you all know, in terms of what, uh, uh, when you ask people about what is IBD or what is Crohn's, what is colitis, I was the same before I joined the charity. I was working in breast cancer before here, and I knew very little. And you get all sorts of answers. Is it something to do with the gut? But one of the ones that actually at this dinner party I was at um, uh, a few weeks ago, a number of people said this. Is that IBS? Now, I'm sure we all hear that. that, that it's amazing what one letter in the alphabet can do uh, to cause create, uh, confusion. Um, so that was a, just a thought. I thought as I was going into t today, uh, trying to sort of talk about the profile of IBD and what people do or don't know, so I've pulled out a few statistics from some of the work that we've been doing in the charity. And this is um, a survey that uh, we subscribe to. It's 1,000 people they go and out, out and ask about whether people have actually heard of IBD. And I was quite surprised, actually, um, because if you take the probably heard of or definitely heard of inflammatory bowel disease, 42% of the respondents said, yes, they've definitely or probably heard about IBD, uh, which was much, much higher than I thought. Um, the remainder, never heard of it, not really sure what the hell it is. Um, uh, and I, that got me thinking, really, because I think there is a real... Um, with these, these kinds of surveys, I'm often a bit cynical. You know, have you heard of this? Have you heard of that? Yeah, I think I've heard of it. People are not 100% sure. But there's a huge difference between hearing about something and actually understanding what on earth it is and do you really understand what IBD is? is it, are you thinking IBS? So this was an interesting stat that we've been starting to look at quite hard within the charity. It's really interesting, by contrast, if you then look at what people with these conditions actually think, because this is uh, an annual survey that we do. This was taken from the 2017 survey. It's a huge response, nearly 10,000 people, patients of people affected by IBD. And it's quite a contrast when actually if you ask people with these conditions what other people, do they really understand uh, what this condition is, 95% say actually no, not, not a clue, limited or no awareness at all of what IBD is and actually what that means to me. So I thought that was quite an interesting uh, contrast. And again, probably pretty obvious stuff here. Um, if we could just wave that magic wand and... Uh, going back to the dinner party, I arrive at the dinner party and people say, I work in IBD, and they say, oh, I know what that is, it's that disease of the gut that is a real nightmare and it causes this and that, and you know, it's a lifelong condition and all of those kinds of things. I always say if there was one thing that we could singly do overnight within the charity that would benefit all patients uh, wherever they may sit, wherever they are on their disease uh, spectrum, it would be raising awareness and understanding of what these conditions are. And again, if you ask patients, you know, the benefit that patients would bring if only f more people knew about what these conditions are would be key. So I think one of the things that we're looking at at the charity, building on the work that's gone before, is how do we really better educate, and that sort of term, education, 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 is absolutely key. And there's a guy here who knows quite a lot about education, actually, and one of, uh, his fav one of my favourite quotes, actually, is that education could be a really powerful weapon that we can use to change the world, and I think that that's something that I think about a lot within the charity in terms of how do we better educate people to make this world a better place for people with these conditions. So we have a new five-year strategy. Um, we have five key uh, strategic goals within it, and um, we launched this at the beginning of the year. 
Um, and we believe this is so fundamental to moving forwards to the world of IBD that one of those five is all about this area of understanding. We want people to understand Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Not mentioned IBD there, I'll come back to that in a moment. But it is absolutely critical. And now within the charity, we're gearing up a whole load of work to look at how can we really make a step change difference in creating a greater understanding and awareness of these conditions. And we're just in phase one at the moment. We're doing a lot of work, a lot of thinking to look at the strategic development of what we need to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about just developing a narrative and then talk a little bit about agents of change. And then that's me done. So, start like with any good awareness campaign. You think about, well, who do you want to talk to? And there's a whole load of audiences. You know, you've got the general public, whatever that means. You've got opinion formers, you've got politicians. You've got relatives of people with these conditions. And all of those are clearly very, very important people and audiences that we need to talk to. But as we've done some of this early work, actually, the people we want to talk to first is people with these conditions. And there's a very good reason for that. If we are able to uh, really channel... Uh, all of the energies of people with these conditions, the growing numbers, you will know the figures, that can be a really powerful force for good and for change and for education. So if we can do work initially with patients, and we have a really good inroad, obviously, being a patient organisation, if we can do that, we believe that will be the first step that we need to take to really create this step change that we need to achieve around uh, education and awareness. So the first thing that we've talked about within the charity is how do we get people talking more and actually if we are going to get people talking how do we develop a narrative that is consistent and how do people talk about the condition now this is why i uh, within mentioned a moment ago within our strategic plan at the moment where we're using crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis because actually if you ask patients what they've got very few actually say i've got ibd they say, I've got Crohn's, or they say, I've got ulcerative colitis, or I've got Crohn's disease. And notwithstanding the importance of IBD as a title or inflammatory bowel disease, and of course, you've got microscopic colitis and Crohn's colitis, we are actually within the charity now making a really conscious effort to speak less about IBD, not to not speak about it, but to actually put Crohn's and colitis at the forefront of everything that we do in our narrative. And there will be times when we still need to use IBD. And I say this today, and it's a good audience to say it to, because I, as clinicians, obviously IBD is how you refer about, about these conditions because it is the generic term. But we believe quite passionately that we have to talk more about Crohn's and colitis, or Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, whilst recognising that there are those other areas is within it. So we are going to do, we are already doing more. Uh, you will see more uh, of the published, publicity that we do within the charities about it and that will, we believe, make it much, much more meaningful. And actually, I think for me, move away from this disaster that is, oh, you've got IBS, have you? Well, I've got a bit of that. And that will really help to drive that, that differentiation. So the first thing is then, we thought, how do people talk about it? How do people talk about it? I, I love this phrase. This is from uh, the book Gut, you know, the, where they talk about the gut as the most underrated and undervalued uh, organization, uh, organ within the body. And I really get that. You know, it's not something we all take for granted. You know, if you think about your brain or your heart or, God, I don't want that to go wrong. But we are very, very complacent when it comes to our digestive system. So first of all, we wanted to sort of try to understand how people describe it. If they're talking about Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, do patients say it's a disease of the gut? You know, if they're at the dinner party and they're trying to explain what it is, how do they talk about it? There's loads of different ways. Um, so like with everything that we do within the charity, we went out and asked patients, and we do a lot of this on social media, and it's a really good sort of temperature check very quickly just to ask people what they think about a particular issue or we're looking for a piece of insight. And we... We have uh, 130,000 people, I think, following us on Facebook. Um, my favourite there, I see Barney laughing. I think he's probably got to the bottom of the slide. Um, like the opening scene from Saving Private Ryan, but in my stomach. That is how one um, patient uh, talks about his condition when he's talking to uh, someone that he's met for the first time about Crohn's colitis. And this gives us a real richness of insight and understanding because what we want to try to do is try to develop a general narrative that we can talk about that people get really, really easily. And whilst um, respecting, obviously, that people will have their own ways in which they uh, choose to talk about the conditions, whether it's like the opening scene of Private Ryan or not. So we are just in the process of trying to sort of understand and 
build a, you know, that elevator pitch. You've got, you know, 20 seconds to explain what Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis is. How do you do that in a really meaningful way? It's, and I think we feel it's not talking about, well, I've got IBD. So we are doing uh, the work. What we want to, what we've said is that whatever we come up with has to be clear, concise, simple, effective, and consistently applied. And most importantly, after that 30 seconds, 20 seconds, one minute, whatever it is, we need people to go away and if we were to, to sort of get them to play back, they need to better understand what this condition is rather than simply focus on symptoms, which is what happens at the moment. You hear a lot of people talking about the condition and in the next breath they're talking about urgency, toilets, diarrhoea and all of those things, which of course are symptomatic, but we need to change, flip the narrative a little bit in order to really drive uh, greater understanding and awareness because I think that some of those um, symptomatic... Uh, issues that people talk about sometimes oversimplify it and, and people don't it just people don't get it oh you've got a bit of diarrhea or yeah I had about that you should have got, shouldn't have had that curry last night you hear so many patients saying those kinds of things when they play out those messages so some exciting work that we're doing at the moment so that's about de developing a narrative. The second thing that we're looking about is how do we really use patients as agents of change? How do we really encourage people to step up, speak out? And as we all know, these are conditions that people have, you know, uh, are embarrassed about. They're, they're, they're not confident to talk about for, for very, very good reasons. So how can we really drive that community to, to be stronger together, which is one of our new values? We did a campaign last year, I think it was maybe even the year before now, which has really started that, and, and we're seeing growing numbers of people who are stepping up and uh, to be counted, stepping out of the shadows. Uh, this was a little digital poster campaign that we did where we encouraged people just to fill in and talk about their disease. It was a really simple tool to do digitally. We've had, I think, nearly eight or 10,000 patients who have done this, shared it with friends, sent it to people that they've never talked to about their condition before, and it's been a really fantastic driver to give people the confidence to step out and it's like a snowball because once one people, person starts the next one says well actually that person's doing it so this has been a really fantastic campaign that we've done uh, whilst clearly always respecting the fact that not everyone will want to do that and that's absolutely fine but we are seeing growing numbers who are who are um, taking that step to talk more about what this condition is and what it means to them. We, of course, have seen also in the last few years, I think, the power of the community and in all of the disease areas I've worked in. I think uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis is the most impassioned, the most determined, the bravest community uh, and the most engaged, actually, that all I've seen. So um, the Get Your Belly Out guys, you will have uh, seen the work that they've been doing. We work very closely with them. But a whole load of blogs, vid video logs, uh, um, people that are sharing stuff on Twitter, and that's really, really critical, and we really uh, encourage that and get the community speaking out because when it comes from in the community, it carries far more weight than uh, Crohn's and Colitis UK said. There is, of course, a role for the media in all of this. Um, we're working hard, both in two areas, really. One, getting the message out there, a lot of personal stories. Storytelling is what, is what the, um, the media love, but I think also, most importantly, is about trying to create inaccuracies or ludicrous headlines. I think it was two years ago, maybe, that uh, actually when the BSU was in Manchester, that there was a, some crazy stuff going on about eat junk food, get Crohn's disease, uh, and how can we as the patient organisation really making sure that we are getting the voice of reality out there and, and, and measuring so when those, there are those moments. And then finally... On the agent to change, I just wanted to share with you some work we've been doing more recently about what we call action-based awareness, which is, um, some of you may have seen this already, really sort of simple sign, big difference, and actually how we've really empowered the community to send emails to supermarkets to say, actually, you can make a really simple difference that will make a, a, a massive uh, difference to people with these conditions. So uh, this is a simple sign. Uh, we've mobilised the, the patient community. 20,000 emails went out uh, to uh, chief executives of all the main stores, and it's had a fantastic effect. We've uh, signed up all of the big supermarkets that have all changed their uh, toilet signs um, just to ensure that if someone is needing to use a disabled or uh, accessible toilet that they're not tutted out or actually they can come out of that toilet and just turn around and point to the person that's given them a bit of a hard time have a look at that 
Uh, um, and that simple strap line, not every disability is visible, is really, really critical. So that's a, a good example we've done more recently of this action-based awareness. We're now doing that on travel hubs. 50,000 emails this time. I had a very disgruntled uh, telephone call from the chief executive of Scottish Rail, who said, uh, actually, I've arrived at work this morning and I've been bombarded with uh, emails from people saying we need to change our toilet signs, and they're just not geared up to handling the, the, the customer service element of, of, of those kinds of things. But to their credit, they have changed their signs, which is good. So, um, so that power of the sort of community is has been really fantastic. We are still at the start of this. It's a five-year program that we've launched this year. Um, it builds on the fantastic work that the charity's done over many years. So over the next few months, you hopefully be hearing more. We would welcome any views, thoughts, opinions, whether it's about the narrative, whether we're right or wrong, not talking about IBD as much. Um, and clearly, you all have a, a critical role to play in this in terms of you're the people that are seeing patients regularly and supporting them. So anything that we can do to help you, to help us, um, would be really, really valued. So please do uh, talk to us at the end or, or, or get in contact with us. So if I go back to my dinner party, uh, I was thinking about what would I want um, uh, if I was to go to a dinner party in the next couple of years and I say I work in Crohn's or IBD, they say, oh, that's Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, isn't it? And that is this, and this is what it means. That is the vision that we have. And if we do that, we believe actually all patients will benefit wherever they may sit and, and, and however severe their condition is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. I should say that we're going to go through our speakers and then have a panel discussion at the end, so if you save up any questions for towards the end of the session, that probably is the best way of doing it.